Peggy 12. Hello, I'm Julian Gollop. Welcome to the Ghost Recon Shadow Wars gameplay video one. I'm going to take you through one of the missions later in the game. We've got two ghosts in this mission. First one is Banshee. She's a recon class. And we've got Duke, who's a commando class. Our objective is to get to this door in the end of the corridor here and open it. Okay, if we look around, we'll see some enemies above us, some to the left, and there are some below. Fortunately, our guys are armed with some pretty heavy weapons. It's a turn-based game, so I'm going to select Banshee here. I'm going to move her up to attack some enemies on the left. The green squares indicate all the positions that I can actually shoot from, so I'm going to move to this position. Select attack for a choice of two targets, this one or this one. The bar above the enemy's head indicates possible damage. Red is certain damage and the orange part is possible damage and the green part is what he's going to be left with. So let's select attack and see what happens. Okay, he's taken 12 hit points of damage, he's half dead. Banshee has finished moving, so I'm going to move over and select you. Again, the green squares show where I can attack from. I'm going to bring Duke up near to Banshee. Select attack. Now, if I select this target, there's a possibility that I'm going to kill him. The orange part of the bar above the enemy's head indicates possible damage, so he may stay alive. This guy, I don't stand a chance of killing. The red lines indicate possible return fire. I'll show you what that means in a bit. Let's just go ahead and attack with Duke. Ah. Unfortunately, the enemy remained alive. And I got return fire from both of them. This is very important tactically to take into account return fire when you're attacking. At the moment, it doesn't matter too much because my guys are very tough. And uh, Duke is taking just a little bit of damage. Actually, nothing yet. So let's end the turn and see what the enemies are going to do. Okay, it looks like they've noticed us. A couple of enemy assault troops moving up next to the turrets. Another assault moving in close to reveal Banshee. The other one attacking Banshee. Normally, Banshee cannot be attacked directly because of her camouflage. But if an enemy moves next to her, she becomes revealed. Okay, we've got the gunner drones moving up to the south. Enemy commando. And above us again, another enemy commando unit. Some assaults. Here we've got two melee drones, which are very nasty in close combat, so we don't want to let these guys get next to us. And finally, we've got one more assault over to the left. Basically, we're surrounded. First, let's deal with the immediate threat. Let's take this guy out. I'm going to just move Banshee a little bit more towards our objective and attack from there. She's at close range, she does a lot of damage and kills in one hit. That's excellent. Now, Duke is free to launch his attack over here. When I select Duke. I'm going to switch to his secondary weapon, which is a shoulder-launched missile launcher. I can't move so far in attack. If I move here, let's attack. I can launch an attack on the line here. It's an area effect weapon, so I should be able to affect three targets. Let's see what happens. Excellent. I've taken out one of the turrets, and two of the defending guards are seriously injured. See what the enemy can respond with. Assault's moving up closer, but they're not in range to attack yet.
Uh, but here we've got an enemy commander unit also equipped with missiles and he manages to get us. The enemy melee train's closing up very fast, they're quite rapid. So now I've got to be careful. I'll stick with the main objective. I'll get Banshee for you to attack the guys over on the left. So let's select Banshee. Banshee is equipped also with a secondary weapon. I'll switch to it now. This is an EMP grenade. It's very effective against enemy drones and turrets. But will also do a reasonable amount of damage to enemy soldiers. So again, if I launch in the middle here, back from this position and see what I can do. Should be able to take most of them out. Yes, excellent, all three are gone. Now this leaves Duke to choose where to attack next. It's a big choice of targets. And now I will probably launch an attack here. So what I'll do is I'll move this way a little bit and I'll select attack position. This means I can select any position in the red area. I can place it here, and because of the area effect, it should affect both those enemies. Let's see. Okay, excellent. They're both damaged, but not killed. Finally, an enemy assault's got up onto the main passage. We'll exchange a fire there. Gunner drone, which is quite nasty, is approaching rapidly. Another enemy commando with missile launcher. Meanwhile, the enemy commando is still launching missiles at us. Duke is under really heavy attack here. We don't want these melee drones to get next to us, so somehow we're going to have to deal with them. Unfortunately, Duke is now powered up. Whenever you attack an enemy or kill him, you get some power points. If you look at the blue bar on the bottom left, you'll see it's 100%. So I'm going to make good use of my power attack. Let's select Duke first. I'm going to launch the power attack into the middle of these guys here. If I move the camera a little bit, you can see they're, they're reasonably well bunched up. Get some return fire from that position, maybe move here I won't get any return fire. Now I'm going to select wide impact which is Duke's power attack. This immediately extends the area of effect and will also do more damage so I should be able to do quite a lot here. Let's see. So I've taken out four enemy targets in one hit which is absolutely excellent. Okay, Banshee is now clear to get to the door. So let's get up towards the door here and let's see what happens. Oh dear, on the other side of the door we've got a whole load of trouble. A lot of enemy drones. But to find out how to beat them, you will have to play the game for yourself. 